Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation, a fun one. We have x cubed plus x squared equals 810, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, even though the first method is not going to be complete. And you'll know why in a little bit. So, first method. Using the cubic formula. Yay! So, I just want to introduce the, well, it's not introducing, but anyways, if you're seeing my videos for the first time, I've done it many times, but cubic formula is fun, and I think you should know it. So, to use the cubic formula, I'm going to set x equal to y minus one third. A lot of people, I'm sure, are going to be questioning this, so let me show you what happens in general. So, in general, if you have, by the way, we're talking about the cubic formula, whatever you want to call this, pick an Italian name. In general, if you have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, which is the general cubic, right? You want to replace x with y minus b over 3a. The reason for that is easy. You want to get rid of x squared and that's how it works. If you want to know why this works, replace x with y plus k and make x squared disappear. In other words, the coefficient of uh, x squared set equal to, I mean the coefficient of y squared, obviously, the quadratic term, set it equal to zero after doing all of this work, and you'll notice that k happens to be negative b over 3a. Make sense? So in this case, our a value is 1, and b is 1. They're both 1, so that's why we have to do this substitution. Make sense? Okay, let's rewrite the problem. x cubed plus x squared equals 810, and let's replace x with y minus one third. This will get rid of the quadratic term. That's the first step. Now, you don't have to use a y here. If you want to use t, coffee, whatever variable you want, you can do it. But I, I'd like to use y, and don't question y. So here's what we're going to do. Replace x with y minus one third. Let's do it. y minus one third to the third power, uh-oh, that's going to be some cubing, and then y minus one-third to the second power equals 810. That's easy, right? So a lot of times I use this shortcut, we also uh, the stuff that works with the cubic formula anyways. So to cube a minus b, this is what I use. I use a cubed minus b cubed minus 3ab times a minus b. Notice that everything is a minus sign. I always have a 3ab in the front, and I kind of write it like this. This also gives us, kind of emphasizes, the difference of two cubes that comes from the cube of a difference. Okay? I hope that made sense. Now, if I use my formula, it's not mine, but the way I use, do it, y cubed minus 1 over 27 minus, now notice that 3 times y times 1 third is just going to be, okay, I'll show it, times a minus b, the threes are going to cancel out. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, that's the cube part, plus uh, a minus b squared, you can do y squared minus 2 over 3y plus 1 ninth equals 810. Large numbers and fractions together. Now, when you go ahead and distribute, you get y cubed minus 1 over 27, and then when you distribute the y here, you're going to get minus y squared, and then plus 1 over 3y, and then plus y squared, and then minus 2 over 3y, and then plus 1 ninth equals 810. Leave the 810 eight, over there for now. We'll take care of that at the end. Now, notice that y squared cancels out. That was the goal, right? We got rid of the quadratic, and now we have y cubed. 1 third minus 2 thirds is negative 1 third, so I'm going to write it as minus 1 third of y. I don't have y squared, so that's it. I've taken care of this, I've taken care of this, and I've taken care of that. Let's go ahead and um, I keep I try to keep track of things so I don't uh, do it again. 1 ninth minus 1 over 27, that will be 3 over 27 minus 1 over 27, that will be plus 2 over 27. And that's equal to 810. Now the next step would be subtracting 2 over 27 from both sides, and that will be 810 minus 2 over 27. And don't multiply both sides by 27 because y cubed is better as is. 
So if you want to call this number k, which is called constant, uh, you can take care of that at the very end. But I'm just going to show you real quick how the cubic formula works. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b. This should look familiar. This is the same thing as a cubed plus b cubed. So this should equal a cubed plus b cubed. It's just the same formula that I used, but for the a plus b quantity cubed. Make sense? Cool, cool. Same idea. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace a plus b with y. And then from here we get the same type of cubic equation and comparing the coefficients gives us negative 3ab equals negative 1 third, which means ab is 1 ninth. And a cubed plus b cubed corresponds to the constant k. Let's call it k for now. And then here's going to be my next step. I'm going to cube both sides. That's going to give me a cubed plus b cubed equals 1 over 729. And then a cubed plus b cubed is k. So I'm going to isolate b cubed and write it as k minus a cubed. And then I'm going to sub it here. And guess what? That's going to give me a quadratic equation in a cubed. And then good luck solving it with the quadratic formula. You can solve it and then back substitute, so on and so forth. That's very painful, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's do it in a much, much better way. And I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. But the graph is going to be a little distorted. And I'll tell you why. Okay, but not now. So second method, we have this equation, right? Okay, I want to work on x cubed plus x squared. And I'm going to write it as x squared plus x plus 1. Well, remember what your math teacher said. When you see a polynomial, factor it, right? I don't know if he said or she said that, but... Anyways, do it. So now I can do something with 810. 810 can be written as, hmm, let's see. I want to write it as some number plus 1 and that times the number squared. So 810 is 81 times 10. 81 seems to be a perfect square, but is does 10 fit the bill? Uh, well, looks like it because I can write it as 9 plus 1. And now, yes, my magical x is 9. You see, because this is x squared. Hocus pocus, abracadabra, mathematics. So now we have the following. x cubed plus x squared equals x squared times x plus 1. And that is 9 squared times 9 plus 1. So x equals 9 works. But that's just one of the solutions. Fine. Let's just um, deal with that for now. And you can find the other solutions obviously easily like this. So x cubed plus x squared is x squared times x plus 1, which is 9 squared times 9 plus 1. So from here we get the following. x cubed minus, okay, I could probably do the following. Let's do it this way. How about this? I'm going to write it as 729 plus, what's the other number? 81, yes. <laughs> so like x cubed minus 729 plus x squared minus 81 equals 0. Now I get difference of two cubes from here let's do it first and then difference of two squares and let's do it second and then x minus 9 obviously is a common factor because uh, x equals 9 is a solution and then we get x squared plus 10x plus 90 equals 0. x equals 9 is well known the other solutions are going to be coming from the quadratic formula, negative 10 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 90. Uh-oh, that's not going to be good because they're going to be complex. Because this is 360, the difference is negative 260, so I can write it as plus minus the square root of 260i divided by 2. 260 is divisible by 4, isn't it? Half of that is 130, half of that is 65. So after simplifying, you're going to get negative 5 plus minus root 65i, if I'm not mistaken, those are going to be the non-real complex solutions. So we got three solutions because this is a cubic. Did I write three? Oh, come on, x equals 9. And here is the graph. Now, let me tell you why I distorted the graph, because I was supposed to graph this one, right? I mean, come on. But I divided by 81 because the graph would be so sharp. It was shooting up. Uh, I just wanted to distort it, kind of condense it, or yeah, it was too shrinked or shrunk. So that's why I did it. But guess what? It doesn't change the x-intercept, right? 
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.